touch me, Jesus, and hold on. That's why I need. That's why I need. That's why I need your touch tonight. Touch me. Your unchanging hand. Touch me. That will not waver. Touch me. Even when I'm worried. And worn out and filled with doubts about tomorrow. Cause I felt this pain yesterday. Touch me. Cause I made so many mistakes. I mean I stumbled and fell. And I did not think I could ever be made or cleaned up. But somehow I believe tonight. If you put your healing hand on me, touch me. Every one of my sins, every oh, one of my God sins will be washed away. I want to be made over. I want to be made over. Everything I've ever needed healing, peace, joy, unspeakable joy.
Tell the story about a woman with an issue Had it 12 long years, didn't know what to do She heard about a man coming through her time She fell to her knees Good morning, good morning, good morning, St. Paul. Good morning online. Good morning, St. Paul everywhere. Are you ready to worship God on today? You ought to stand up on your feet and you ought to clap your hands. Come on, it's an amazing Sunday. If God has woke you up this morning, you ought to praise God today. If you kept you in your right mind, you ought to praise God today. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to worship God. I'm ready to God for God to do some things and I'm ready to lay it at the altar.
put your hands together.
ought to bless the Lord in this place. Somebody ought to bless the Lord in this place. God is an awesome God. And if you've been through some things in your life, you know what I'm talking about. God is awesome. I know some of us are still bouncing back from the loss of an hour. Um, but I think sometimes when, when we hear, um, humanly speaking, it's like, yeah, okay, but, like, is there any evidence of that? Humanly speaking, right? Um, so. Phil has his own testimony, so I won't tell his testimony, but he got his own testimony, right? So, so for people like Phil, you've experienced God being a healer in your life. Can you just step out to the nearest aisle? Just step in the nearest aisle. If, you, if you've experienced God being a healer, in your life. Can you just step? For those of you online, can you just wave your hand if you've experienced God? So I just want you in the room to see, see the evidence of how awesome God is. We're not, we're not just singing a song. It's a whole bunch of people in here who can testify to the fact that God is a healer. Amen? Come on. So, so we serve an awesome God. I just wanted you to see the evidence, right? With every person, there is a story, there is a testimony of the faithfulness of God. You all can go back in your, in your spaces, but sometimes we just need to see, just need to see, right? And maybe we have some, we have some people who are like, yeah, you guys are talking about he's a provider. If God has provided with you, I ain't talking about in the last year. But like God has provided for you in the last month. Could you just step in the aisle? He's provided for you in the last month. We just want to testify. Yeah, we just want to testify. <laughs> right? We just want to testify. That's all. Come on. He's a provider. He's awesome. We just want to testify. That's all we're doing. Online, wave your hand if he's provided because we just want to testify. You all can go back to your seats. Go back to your seats. Every now and then, we just need to see the testimonies of the goodness of God. We thank God for testimonies, for real people who can testify to the fact, hey, I just want you to know, the God I serve, He awesome. Like, he off the chain, off the charts, awesome. And we celebrate him in this place. So if you're here today and you're in need of an awesome God, you have a prayer request. I can't guarantee you God's going to answer the way you want him to answer. I can't guarantee that God's going to fix it the way you want him to fix it. But if you have a prayer request and you want to see an awesome God at work in your life, you don't have to go anywhere, just stand to your feet. We're just going to take a few moments, and I'm just going to encourage you just to offer up your request to God. As you stand to your feet, whatever your request is, just offer up your request to God, whatever it is. Just offer it up. Be very 
specific. Justin, uh, who works sound uh, and media, he oversees a lot of what takes place on Sunday. Those of you online want you to be specific. He and I talk about a lot the importance of us being specific in our prayers so that there is no question that this was God. No question like, God, I told you the color, I told you the time, right? No question. So whatever your request is, whatever you have need of, just to see that he's an awesome God, make your request known. So God, I uh, stand in agreement, not because we have any kind of influence over you, not because we can say things in a certain way to rub you and move you to do what we want you to do. We come as your children, boldly approaching your throne of grace as you told us, so that we might find grace and mercy to help us in our time of need. So there are many of us in the room and online who are looking for you to show up in specific situations in our lives as an awesome God. So we ask God you help us to see you. Help us to be aware that you are at work. Help us to be aware that you are with us and we are not alone. God, we don't know what you desire to do in the midst of our situation. We know what we want you to do. But God, we've lived long enough, some of us, to know that what we want is not always best for us. So, Father, can you do what would be best for us, best for your glory, best for your honor, best for people to see Jesus in us? Can you do, God, in whatever the situation is, God, can you work in such a way that you would receive glory, that your name would be great, God, that, that we would be able to see you in ways we've never seen you before and experience you in ways we've never experienced you before, God, that we would have confidence that the God that we serve is an awesome God. That's our simple request, that you just be who you are, God, in the midst of our lives and in the midst of our situations. So to the awesome God, who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we could ask or think according to his power that is at work within us, we surrender our requests, both online and in person, and we trust you for results. Can we say together amen? amen? Can we thank God in advance for his response? Amen. In the house, you may be seated online. Man, what a blessing, what a blessing. Uh, team, thank you so much for leading us in that space to remind us that our God is an awesome God. I was talking to one of the young people, uh, Sam, this morning, checking in. I said, how you doing, Sam? He said, I missed that hour. <laughs> missed that hour. Anybody else miss that hour? <laughs> missed that hour. All right, don't look funny when people come in 30 minutes from now. Don't look funny. Don't laugh when they come in 30 minutes from now, like, what's up, y'all? Right? Don't laugh. Just like, come on, come on, come on. Just scoot over. All right? Don't make it hard for them. Just scoot over. We'll get adjusted to this hour and appreciate it. We celebrate what God is doing online and in person. Let me make sure I do what I'm assigned to do. Let me highlight the fact that uh, some of you have been looking for opportunities to step in and serve. You've been uh, looking for a place uh, to step in and serve. Uh, so let me... Um, let me speak to a thought that people have. Here's a thought that people have when people gather or connect with St. Paul. I'm sure with all the people they have who say they go to St. Paul, I'm sure they don't need any more help. Anybody ever heard somebody say that? All right. I'm sure with all the people they have at St. Paul, I'm sure they don't need any more help. They don't need anybody else to serve. I'm sure they got everything taken care of. Nope. All right, so if you're here and you've been looking for a space, we just want you to know, man, there's plenty of room, plenty of opportunities to serve. So we'll have some people 
in the North X, which is that area outside the door uh, after service for you to be able to connect. For those of you who are online, uh, we have space uh, on our app as well as on the website where if you desire to serve, there are opportunities for you to serve online, for you to be a part of a St. Paul Everywhere online ministry. So we want you to go to the website and go to the app and just let us know that you want to serve. So you'll have opportunities to plug in and hear about some serving opportunities uh, immediately after service. Secondly, next Sunday, March 17th, we're going to celebrate our church anniversary. St. Paul was organized 110 years ago. 110 years of ministry in the city of Peoria. So we thank God for 110 years. We're asking everyone who can, everyone who will, if you can wear some St. Paul gear, something with St. Paul on it. Uh, so we're asking you to do that. Uh, next week, we're just going we to St. Paul up in this place. We're just going to wear, all right? So if you have some St. Paul gear, we want you to wear your St. Paul gear next week as we celebrate 110 years where God has allowed us to do ministry in the city of Peoria. Uh, and we are so thankful for all of the people who have been a part of the work that God has been doing through this place called St. Paul. Amen. So we celebrate that. Amen. We honor God for that. So make sure you're here next Sunday. And what are we wearing? St. Paul gear. All right. So they have some stuff if you need some stuff. And then uh, finally, uh, some of you go to church during the week. Uh, so if you don't mind going to church during the week, two things. During Holy Week, um, the week leading up to the crucifixion of Christ. During Holy Week, we'll have a couple of things taking place. On that Wednesday, which is the 27th, I'll have the privilege of preaching at Grace Baptist Church. That information is on the website, then in your emails. Uh, if you can join us, that would be a beautiful thing. It'd be great for me to be able to look out and see faces that I know. Uh, so if you can join us for that worship experience, we would greatly appreciate it. And then on that Thursday, March 28th, uh, we're going to have a, a worship service where we're going to worship a bit. Uh, we're going to spend some time in prayer. We're going to hear some word. Uh, so we're just going to worship together and love on each other on that Thursday night here at St. Paul. So if you can't make Wednesday, join us on Thursday here at St. Paul. So we're looking forward to that uh, on that particular day at 7 p.m. Amen. All right. Okay. Well, it's time for us to give and fellowship and hang out with each other. Uh, man, I appreciate some of our teenagers brought some of their friends to church. Uh, so can we celebrate our teenagers who, amen, are willing to bring some of their friends. So uh, shout out to the Bershonas. Uh, man, I appreciate you all bringing some of your people to hang out with us. Pleasure to meet them. Uh, and others, you've invited somebody to be with us in person. Some of you have invited people to be with us online. Uh, this is a time where we're going to give. We give digitally and uh, in receptacles in the back wall. But we also love on each other. We shake hands, we give hugs, high fives, all of that. Uh, because we want to be a place where people are known, where people are known, where you know me, I know you. Uh, and we connect with one another. So that's the whole goal of that. Uh, so we're going to have a time after I pray. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. I was talking to somebody this week, um, and uh, I said, yeah, do a meet and greet. Let me know something. And uh, the person said, yeah, I don't get up doing meet and greet. <laughs> I said, okay, I feel you, I feel you, all right? I said, get up doing meet and greet, all right? So I understand some of you don't get up doing meet and greet, but you greet one another in your space. So if that's you and that's your comfort level, cool, it's cool, all right? So I want to pray. We're going to give. We're going to meet and greet one another, whether we are seated or moving around. We're going to love on each other. So let's bow and pray. Daddy, thank you so much for who you are, for what you do and how you work. Thank you for the opportunity to celebrate an awesome God, to be able to give through service, to give our time back to you because it all belongs to you, to give our energy back to you because it all belongs to you, to surrender our gifts to you because they belong to you, and then to surrender financial resources to you because it all belongs to you. Help us now as we give and as we give of ourselves to love on one another that we would be able to give our best. Uh, some of us this week has been a rough week, so blessed that somebody would be able to give us some encouragement 
For some of us, man, it's been an exciting week. So blessed that we would be able to share that joy. So blessed that during this exchange that your spirit would lead, guide, and influence us so that others would be better because of their encounter with us is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's greet one another. Let's give. Let's love on each other. <laughs>
Wow. Okay. Okay. No, this is, this is uh, it's a blessing to see. It's a blessing to see. So one of the other things uh, that we often hear when we interact with people until they come is that people have an idea of what y'all like. You know that, right? They have an idea of what y'all like. And they don't know y'all. But they made up what they think y'all like. <laughs> they don't know y'all regular jacked up people. They don't know it. They don't know it. They don't know it. They don't, they don't know how unstable you are most days. They don't know. They don't know. They don't know that without Jesus, you would lose your mind like everybody else. Amen. They don't know. They don't know. Um, so I encourage you as you talk to people, um, Get comfortable just being you for Jesus. Uh, time is out for us feeling like we need to wear a mask. Or that we need to perform in a certain way so that we can appear Christian. Followers of Christ are just regular people who are imperfect, who are following a perfect Savior. Amen. Amen. That means nine times out of ten, if you're around me long enough, you're going to see me operating in my flesh. Amen, somebody. Because I don't surrender to the Spirit all the time. Right? Y'all acting like I'm the only one. <laughs> all right? But I think it's important for us to say it. It's important for us to say it for people who are new in Christ. It's important for us to say it for our young people so that they don't think, oh, I thought they walked in the Spirit like 24-7. You know, it's like, no, nah, we trying, but, man, that flesh keep rising up. Like, kill that fool, kill that fool, right? You got you to kill it. The Bible says put to death the flesh, right? You, gotta, you, gotta, you can't negotiate with it, right? The crazy that exists on the inside of me, I can't negotiate with it. Like, now, Devro, you know we shouldn't do that. Right? No, the Holy Spirit got to body slam them. They're like, uh-uh, we're not doing that today. Am I talking to anybody? Okay. Okay. All right. So just wanted to make sure I'm in the right place. So let's jump in. We're in uh, week two of pursuing uh, purpose, getting clarity on pursuing purpose, looking at the life of Jesus, really trying to lock into the life of Jesus and see what lessons we can learn as we look at his life, um, we're going to dive in, the dive in, the dive in. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 3. If you're not familiar with the Bible, Matthew chapter 3. If you have a hard print Bible, um, go to the table of contents, Matthew, just like the name. Uh, find out what page number it's on. Go to that page number. Once you get to that page number, chapters are the large numbers, verses are the small numbers. So the chapter is three. If you're on a device, uh, you can download the Bible app, type in Bible in your app store. The first uh, Bible app that should pop up is a Brown Bible U version. Download that, it's free of charge. Uh, once you download it, uh, select a New Living Translation or CSB which is just going to be words at the top. Um, and then you click on a book of the Bible, Matthew. We're in chapter what? Not, but, not, but. We're in chapter 3. So we're in Matthew chapter 3. And our focal passage is going to be verses 13 through 17. 13 through 17 as we look at the life of Jesus. I've been wrestling with how to present today's message because I think it speaks to uh, a core issue within our society, within our community, within our own very lives. It's not a new issue. It's an old issue. It's a human issue. It's an issue of identity, identity. 
A lot of us are wrestling with questions of identity. Who am I? And based on who I am, what should I do? And a lot of us are defining ourselves based on our jobs, based on our accomplishments, based on our race, based on our gender, sexuality, political views, and perspective, only to discover for many of us, the majority of the time, that those really are not sufficient. That while we might be committed to them and sometimes willing to go to bat for them, to fight for them, to sacrifice for them, some even die for them, we realize that they leave us wanting. So how do we reconcile this issue of longing for identity in light of societal expectations, especially societal expectations that we have external validation, that something on the outside really validates my sense of who I am? The age-old question is, do you know who you are? And I want to suggest that if we know who we are, then we know then what we should be doing. But if we miss it on who we are, if we land in a place that's not sufficient, that's not adequate, that's not a solid foundation, then we may find ourselves engaging in activity that keeps us busy, but it's not in alignment with who our creator created us to be. So that leads us to the gospel of Matthew. Matthew writes this gospel to tell us about Jesus and as Matthew writes this gospel, he's writing to introduce us to who Jesus is. He writes this gospel to communicate to people in his time and beyond his time the identity of Jesus the Christ. He tries to make it clear if you follow Matthew's gospel, so we're going to be in chapter 3 which means that chapter 2 and chapter 1 came before chapter 3. So if we're tracking with Matthew's gospel in Matthew chapter 1, he gives us the genealogy of Jesus to let us know that, that if you check Jesus' DNA, you're going to track him back to Father Abraham who had many sons, right? The one that God promised that he would bless to have a child, and from that child, a nation would come, and from that nation, nations would be blessed. What Matthew does is he gives us the genealogy of Jesus to introduce us to who Jesus is. He says, whoever he is, please know that his lineage goes all the way back to Father Abraham. Not only that, but in Matthew chapter 1, verse 20, he gives us another hint about the identity of Jesus to suggest that whoever he is, please know, verse 20, he's the son of David. That, that, that his lineage is not only connected to Abraham, but he's somehow in David's line, which for people who were of the nation of Israel, who were of the lineage of Abraham, they would understand the significance of that connection to David because they would understand that David had received a promise from God that a king would rise up whose kingdom will have no end. So Matthew says, I just want to insert, not only is he connected to Abraham, but please know that he's of the line of David. And then in verse 23, after being told about his arrival, they communicate that his name shall be called Emmanuel, which means God 
with us. So he has a lineage that's connected to Abraham that takes us all the way back to the promise of God, a nation that will bless the nations. He's somehow connected to David, a promise that there will be a king from David's line whose kingdom will have no end. But not only that, somehow he's God with us. He's introducing us to Jesus to help us to understand and appreciate the identity of Jesus. And then when the wise men come to visit him in Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12, they come saying, where is the one born king of the Jews? So he's somehow connected to the lineage of Abraham, nation that will bless nations, somehow connected to David, a king whose kingdom will have no end. Somehow he's God with us, and he is born king of the Jews. Matthew wants to introduce us to Jesus to help us to understand and see his identity. So remember last week when we looked at the life of Jesus in Luke's gospel, anybody remember how old Jesus was? Twelve. He was twelve last week. Now we're in Matthew chapter 3 this week, and even though Matthew doesn't tell us how old Jesus is, Luke tells us, because we're getting ready to look at the baptism of Jesus Right? And Luke tells us in Luke 3, around verse 23, that after his baptism, he was around 30 years of age. So for 18 years, he's he's lived in obscurity. For 18 years, it seems as though he's been quiet, and yet now he shows up on the scene. And Matthew wants us to know that when he shows up on the scene, it's a reminder to pay attention to who he is. We're in Matthew 3, 13 through 17, but I can't get to Matthew 3, 13 through 17 without looking at Matthew 3, 1 through 12. Does that make sense? Am I boring y'all, giving y'all the background? All right. So Matthew 1 through 12, Matthew says, I want you to know that there is a, a forerunner, there is an advanced man. So, so uh, in their time, if a great leader was coming to town, they would send an advanced person, a person to go to announce, hey, a great leader is getting ready to come to town. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Right. So Matthew says, I want you to know that John the Baptist is the advanced man for Jesus. Right. Isaiah says that he was going to come as an advanced man, as a voice crying in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. He's coming to show up to tell the people, get ready, get ready, get ready. Why? Because somebody special getting ready to show up, and you need to get the stuff out of the way that would hinder you from receiving him for who he is. So that's what we see in Matthew 3, 1 through 12. John the Baptist, the cousin of Jesus, preparing the way, being the advanced man, to say, get ready. And how does he say, get ready? Matthew says, he says, get ready by repent. Anybody know what repent mean? You got to change. Anybody know what repent mean? You got to what? Change. Repent means change. John comes and says, hey, if you want to get ready for him, you got to change. You can't keep functioning the way you function. You can't keep doing what you're doing. You got to turn from your sin to get ready for him. You got to turn from your sin and be baptized. So it says that John was out there in the wilderness baptizing people, and people are showing up in the wilderness. This brother out here with a strange diet, eating honey and bugs and stuff. He dressed strange, right? But, But he's talking about one who is to come, and people are showing up in the wilderness to hear this message that you need to change. Isn't that something? People don't show up anymore for a message that you need to change. (laughs) <laughs> People want to hear a message, tell me I'm good, tell me I'm all right, tell me I'm on track. No, he's out there saying, you need to change to get ready for him. And people are showing up, not just regular people. Regular people are showing up. He says, change and make sure that your life lines up with the change that you say you have. And then religious leaders are showing up and they're watching and he's proclaiming his message of change. And then one day, Matthew writes that there was a, a special guest. After 18 years in obscurity, one day Matthew writes that Jesus shows up. That Jesus shows up on purpose for a purpose. So let me, let me read Matthew 13, Matthew 3 verse 13 through 17. 
Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. Why did he come? I was just checking to see if you all were listening. He came to be baptized by him. But John tried to stop him saying, hey, I need to be baptized by you. And yet you come to me. Jesus answered him, verse 15, allow it for now because this is the way for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then John allowed him to be baptized. When Jesus was baptized, he went up immediately from the water. The heavens suddenly opened for him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming down on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. After 18 years in obscurity, Jesus shows up on purpose for a purpose. And what was the purpose? That he might be baptized by John, by the one who was the advanced man to say, prepare the way, get ready, get ready, get ready. He's coming. And you need to move some stuff out of the way if you're going to get ready for him. Jesus shows up on purpose for a purpose to allow John to baptize him. And when he shows up to allow John to baptize, John like, whoa, whoa, no, no. You need to be baptizing me, not me baptizing you. I may not know completely who you are, but I got a sense of who you are. And I think it should be the reverse. And Jesus said, no, no, why don't you allow it to be so that we might fulfill righteousness? Jesus shows up on purpose for a purpose because he had clarity of his purpose. Jesus knows who he is. Is And because he knows who he is, he surrenders himself to the will of the Father to show up to be baptized by John the Baptist. Not because he had committed any sin, but he shows up so that the righteousness might be fulfilled. And strangely enough, when he comes out of the water, some amazing things happen. So here's what I want to say. Thank you for listening to the background because it's important. Here are things that may be more relevant for each of us based on where we are. Here's my big idea in a sentence. The clarity about our identity empowers us to confidently go public in living out our purpose. Clarity about our identity empowers us to confidently go public in living out our purpose. Look again. Jesus shows up on purpose, for a purpose, to be baptized by John the Baptist. When he comes out of the water, what happens? Y'all can talk. What happens? The Holy Spirit does what? Descends like dove, right? Like, right? Comparison, right? Like, like. not as, but like, right? Like a dove, right? So we got got this Holy Spirit thing taking place. Holy Spirit, uh, the Spirit of God descends upon him like a dove. And what else happens? There's a voice. And what does the voice say? Say it slow. This is my, is it just my son? My beloved son. This, right here, this dude, this, this is my boy. My beloved boy. In whom I am well pleased. Hear it. Because when we have Clarity of our purpose, it empowers us when we know who we are to courageously go public doing what we believe God wants us to do. So I'm going to highlight two things, and then I'll talk about how that plays out. Here's the first thing I'm going to highlight. Can you say affirmation? Ah, that was weak. Let's try it again. Can you say affirmation? Affirmation. Much better, right? So that's the first thing I want to highlight. I want to highlight 
affirmation, to affirm, right? I want to highlight that. And here's the second thing I'm going to highlight. Can you say confirmation? confirmation. To confirm. We're going to talk about and some of y'all are smart. Thank you. We're going to talk about and okay, so let's talk about affirmation. Affirmation. God's words affirm the identity of Jesus as his son. The words of God, this is my beloved son, affirms the relationship that the Father, God, has with his son. Look, look, look at what happens. The, the, Jesus is coming out of the water. The Holy Spirit is descending. The Father is speaking. They call it the Godhead. We believe in one God who somehow exists as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I'll say it again. If you're a follower of Christ and you believe in the Scriptures, we believe there is one God. Hero Israel, the Lord our God is one. We believe there is one God who somehow exists as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And when he comes out of the water, we have the Son coming out of the water, we have the Holy Spirit descending, and we have the Father speaking. We have affirmation. The Father is affirming the identity of Jesus the Christ as his Son, which speaks to relationship, that this is my Son. This is one that I have relationship with. This is one that I love. This is one that I accept. This is one that I've given divine purpose. Can you say affirmation? Because as we listen, it's like, man, that's cool for Jesus. That's cool for Jesus. But I haven't had a whole bunch of people in life to affirm me. Haven't had a whole bunch of people, some of us would say, in life to affirm me, to affirm who I am. That's why I've been running around trying to figure out who I am. That's why I've been looking everywhere else to figure out who I am because I haven't had anybody to affirm me. Why is affirmation so important? Because clarity on my identity empowers me to have courage to go public to fulfill my purpose. And if I don't have clarity on my identity, then I'm going I'm, I'm to stand back. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cower. I'm, I'm not going to be courageous in going public to fulfill my purpose. But when I have clarity, I know who I am. Who are you? Right? And many of us, we give a whole bunch of things to fill in that blank, but who are you? No, you're not Jesus. I'm not Jesus. None of us are Jesus, but who are you? What's, what's the foundation of your identity? Is it your job? Is it your degree? Is it your resume? Is it your gender? Is it something else? What's the foundation of your identity? Please hear as a follower of Jesus Christ. Listen to what the Scripture says in John 1, beginning at verse 10. He was in the world, and the world was created through him, and yet the world did not recognize him, talking about Jesus. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, he gave them the right to be children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born not of natural descent or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. To those who received Jesus, to those who believed in Jesus, Jesus gives the right for them to become what? Hmm. Okay. So let's try this one. John, again, 1 John 3, verse 1. See what great love the Father has given us that we should be called God's children. And we are. 
The reason the world does not know us is that it didn't know him. Dear friends, we are God's children now. And what we will be has not yet been revealed. We know that when he appears, we will be like him because we will see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him or her purifies himself just as he is pure. Did you hear it? Okay, no, you didn't, you didn't. So, um, as recent as 2019, as many as 26 million Americans have completed DNA tests, submitted their DNA, because we want to know who we are. We want to know our people, where our people are from, and who we connected to, right? And, and I won't ask how many of you submitted your DNA so you can figure out who you are. What's your place of origin? What are all your connections, right? But I would imagine that many, when they receive their DNA test, they receive it with excitement. Like, ooh, I'm getting ready to find out who I am. Getting ready to find out who I can connect it to, my place of origin. Ooh, I'm getting ready to find out and open it up. And once they open it up, they get excited. And then they're telling everybody, you know, I'm such and such percent of this. And I'm such and such percent of that. And I'm connected to these people and those people and these people and those people. Get excited about it because in their minds it speaks to their identity. I know you didn't know. But what I just read to you in John chapter 1 and 1 John chapter 3 were your DNA results. Because you didn't know, you, you, you didn't know to get excited. See, in your, in your human DNA results, if you see somebody named who's famous that you connect to like, ooh, that's my cousin. <laughs> what I just read to you in John chapter 1 and 1 John chapter 3 says that if you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, you are a child of God. <laughs> you are an heir to the kingdom of of God, the God of the universe is your daddy. That's your DNA results. So when we think about our identity. Here is the foundation of our identity. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. Affirmation. Mm, it's hard for us, right? Because I don't always feel like a child of God. My DNA is not about my feelings. It's about the facts. Come on, somebody. It's not about your feelings. It's God says if you believe that Jesus Christ is his son, you've placed your hope, your faith, your confidence in him. You are a child of God. And I see I need to lean in. Because I get it. Many of us, it's hard to imagine. So here's what I want to ask you to do. I just want to ask you to say out loud, like, I am a child of God. (laughs) I know, it's strange. No, really, I, I, I need you to hear it. I need you to feel it. I need you to get it. I am a child of God. Can you say that to yourself again? I am a child of God. Now, now why do I want to affirm you in this way? Because when you understand that the core of your identity is that you are a child of God, that does not change. You are a child of God. It it orients you. It directs you. You are a child of God. Okay, so your first word was affirmation, confirmation, 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 confirmation. Uh, The father, this is my beloved son, 
in whom I'm well pleased. It's like, oh, cool, that's cool for Jesus. Confirmation. What confirmation do we have that we are children of God? The love we receive every day. I know we don't think about it much because we're so busy living life. We don't think about the fact that Scripture says every new day we get a brand new mercy. We don't, we, don't, we don't think about it, we don't, we don't chew on it, we don't, we don't, we don't wrestle with it, but, 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 but when we realize that, that, man, each day we get to experience not only the love of God and, and the companionship of God, right? Old church, they used to sing songs like, walk with me, Lord, walk with me, right? Because it was, it, was it was this idea that, that, that not only did I know God, but God is, is with me, that, that, that he's holding my hand, Lord, hold my hand, that, that I, I get to go to him. That's what we did in the prayer, boldly approach the throne of grace so we can find grace and mercy to help. I get to go to my daddy, right? Every time I draw nigh to my daddy, guess what he does? He does, oh, thank you, God. He's not like some of our human fathers. He doesn't turn his back on us. He doesn't deny us and say, that's not my child. No, when I draw nigh to God, you know what he does? Every single time he draws nigh to me every single time when I'm in the midst of my mess, he draws nigh to me every single time. He never turns his back on me. He never sends me away. He says, I know, I know you messed up. I know. Come on, come on, my son. Come on, I know, I know. I know you made some bad choices. I know you, I know you got off track. It's all right. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. He confirms in his interaction with us. And, and for, thank you, God. For some of us, our, our, our struggle to see God that way is because our interactions with people are not that way. So because our interactions with people are not that way, we attribute the behavior of people to God. We figure if the church people treat me like this, then surely God is treating me like this. No, the church people are the church people and God is God. <laughs> and God is, is confirming his love. Romans, Romans, Romans 8, let me read it to you. He confirms his love through his spirit. Romans 8, 14. For all those led by God's spirit are God's sons. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. Instead, you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies together with our spirit that we are God's children. And if children also heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him so that we may also be, be glorified with him. Wait a minute. God confirms through, through, through his love, but he also confirms through his spirit. So, so when I choose to believe in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, Jesus promised that he was going to send the spirit to live inside of me. The spirit is not something that I necessarily feel, right? And, and, and we know in the church we kind of mess y'all up. I can feel the spirit moving, right? They running around the church. What's wrong? They got the spirit, baby. They got the <laughs> They got the spirit, baby. That's all. They just got the spirit, baby, right? Right? But, but the spirit is the one who, who works on my mind. Spirit is the one who says, hey, hey, you know you ain't supposed to be thinking that way. I know, I know, but I'm thinking that way. Okay, I can help you if you want me to help you. I don't know if I want you to help me right now, so I ain't going to look to you to help me right now. But I can help you if you want me to help me. If you can just surrender, I can help you if you want me to help you. But, but I don't want you to help me. Let, just let me go and do my thing right now. Okay, go and do your thing. When you get done, I'm going to be right here because I can help you if you want me to help you. The Spirit is the one that works on our heart. To, to draw us to the Father. That, that's why, why sometimes like, people are like, I don't know if I got the Spirit, you know, because all the stuff I'm doing. If, if you didn't have the Spirit, you wouldn't be bothered by all the stuff you're doing. <laughs> 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 when you ain't got the Spirit, you ain't got no conviction. You're like, whatever, whatever. I'm living my best life, y'all. Y'all go on to church, I'm going to do my thing. 
But when the Spirit is living inside of you, He's working on us to make us uncomfortable. That's why you keep coming back. Some of you keep coming back to church like, man, I'm going to try one more again. I'm going to try one more again. I came in last time. I fell off, and I'm going to try one more again. Why? Because Spirit keep tugging at you to say, hey, I ain't make you to be out there. I ain't make you to act that way. I created you to be different. So the Spirit of God confirms that we are indeed sons and daughters of God. I wish that I could help each of us really embrace the fact that you are a child of God. See, when I understand my identity, I'm a child of God. And God will always be God. And God will not change. His love does not change. It does not. And because I understand that I'm a child of God, then, then how does that influence my behavior? So as a child of God, it's like, Daddy, I, I just want to surrender to do what you want me to do. Because you're my daddy. I want to please you, Daddy. See, you my daddy when I do what you want me to do and when I don't do what you want me to do. But I know that when I do what you created me to do, you smile like, yes. Mm. Oh, thank you, God. Oh, thank you. You smile not because it changed anything for you. But you know it changed everything for me. Okay. So let me give you a practical example. If you are a parent, if you are a parent, uh, your child is your child. Your child is your child. Good, bad. That's your baby. That's your baby. That's, don't disown your baby. That's your baby. They come from you. That's your baby. That's you in them. That's your baby. Right? And, and, and as a parent... You're excited when your child makes right choices. Not necessarily because it changes anything for you, but because you know the path of bad choices. And as a parent, you want what's best for them. And it hurts you to know that they're going to make choices that's going to lead them to a place that's not best for them. So you get excited when they make choices that lead them on a path that is best for them. See, see, I'm a child of God. And when I surrender to say I want to do what you want me to do instead of what I want to do because I trust that you know better than me. And, and because you know better than me, then what you want me to do is always better than what I want to do. What I want to do might be fun. But we ain't going to lie about it. Come on, somebody. It might be fun. Right? But it ain't going to last long. <laughs> right? But what you want me to do is better for me. So when I, when I can wrap myself in the fact that I am a, I am a child of God, then I, I surrender and I say, hey, I want... I want what you want. I want to live to please you. And, and I want to represent you. So I'm going to wrap it up. But uh, as I'm thinking about this, I want, I want to represent. So, so anybody, uh, some of you I haven't met yet. Hello, my name is Deborah Hubbard. Uh, I, re I realized just now I didn't introduce myself. Hello. <laughs> like you're here for the first time, like, I don't know who this dude is. He got a lot of energy. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> so if you're online in person, hello, my name is Deborah Hubbard, right? Uh, and I get to serve as lead pastor, which means that I do teaching here and a whole bunch of other things. But, uh, but my point is, anybody who's been around me for more than 15 minutes, maybe 20, right? You're going to know I, I love Jesus. I love me some Christy Hubbard. If you around me longer, you don't know. If she walk in the room, you're going to know. You're like, I don't know who she is, but 
That brother probably need to do something about that. <laughs> right? Right? And you're going to know I'm from East St. Louis, Illinois. You're going to know it. You're going to know it. Why? Because I take pride in representing my city. I take pride in representing my city. My city where people say, can anything good come out of East St. Louis? I take pride in representing my city. Let people know that smart, intelligent, brilliant, change makers come out of East St. Louis. Why? Because I take pride in representing my city. When I know who I am, I know that I am a child of God, I take pride in representing my daddy. My love for East St. Louis pales in comparison to my love for my daddy. And I want everybody to know, I take pride in representing my daddy. I want to represent my daddy. I want my daddy to be proud every time I show up. I want people to be like, oh, God, your daddy. Okay, I see how you get out. You're doing that thing. You're doing that. Yeah, because I want to represent my daddy in a way that calls you to know that my daddy is somebody. When I understand my identity, it changes how I live from day to day. So here's all I came to tell you. You are a child of God. If you've placed your faith, your hope, your confidence in Jesus the Christ, your foundational identity is not your race. And whatever your race is, great, be excited about it. Because God made you that on purpose. I'll say it again. God made you that on purpose. So you can be excited about it. But don't let that be the foundation of your identity. The foundation of the identity of a follower of Jesus Christ is that we are children of the Most High God. And when that's the foundation of my identity, it shifts, empowers, gives me courage to live out purpose that is consistent with who I say I am. So here is what I want you to say to yourself. If you have trusted in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, can you remind yourself, I am a child of God? No, can you remind yourself, I am a child of God? Now, as all those lies start to pop up, Right? The attack of the enemy. Not after what you did. Not after how you acted this morning. Not after what you said to your kids before you came to church while you was in the car. Not after all that. You're going to sit up in here and say you're a child of God? Say, yes, I'm telling my, I am a child of God. Because the facts about who I am does not change. I am a child of God. I'm a child of God. Right? And God loves you. God has a plan and a purpose for you. And your daddy will never turn his back on you. So for some of us as children of God, here's my encouragement in this moment. God says whenever we come to him and ask for forgiveness, he gives it to us in Jesus. For most of us, that's not the problem. For most of us, the problem is forgiving ourselves. So because God is willing to forgive you, if you've already taken it to God, since you are a child of God, can you do yourself a favor and tell you, I forgive me because God has forgiven me. I can let it go because God has forgiven me. Jesus covered that. So I don't need to carry it because he covered it. I don't need that weight. I need to release that weight. Why? He covered it because that's what our daddy does for his children. So the praise team is coming, and while they come, I recognize that there are some people online and in person who have not yet trusted in Jesus Christ. 
who have not yet made a decision to follow him. And for some, you haven't made a decision because you're like, I don't know if I can get it right. I need to get myself together before I come to God. God, no, no. Scripture says God loves us while we were ungodly, while we were enemies. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So the gospel is you don't need to get yourself together because if you could get yourself together, you would need Jesus. That's the whole reason we trust in Jesus because we can't get ourselves together. So if you're here today online or in person, I want to extend the invitation to you to trust in Jesus, to say, I can't get myself together, but he can. I can't cover all the wrong I've done, but he has. And the God of the universe is standing with open arms to receive me, regardless of what I've done. What about this? It's covered. But you don't know about this. It's covered. When Jesus died, he died and shed his blood for all our sins. So I want you to hear his cover. He's just waiting on you to come to him and say, I surrender. I receive this gift that you are extending to me for me to be your child. So this morning, I extend the opportunity if that's you. I want to invite you to come. I invite you first to bow where you are and just say to God what's on your heart. Maybe it's something like, God, I don't know if all this is real, but I know I need help. And I like this message that I'm hearing about Jesus. So I'm going to try to trust. And as I try to trust, as I surrender to follow, can you help me? As I turn from what I know and I turn to you with limited knowledge and experience, but trusting in this person, Jesus the Christ, who is your beloved son in whom you are well pleased. Can you change me? And if that's you today, and you prayed that prayer, we just invite you to come online. We invite you just to let somebody know. I have decided Say, that's my decision. To Jesus. If you brought somebody today, you can talk to them and say, it's all right for you to trust in him. And tell them if they want to walk to trust in him, you'll walk with them. So I'll go with you. Do you want to trust them today? Because when you have clarity on who you are, it gives you the courage to go public. Now is the time to go public. To say, I don't care who knows, I'm going I'm to follow Jesus. I'm going to follow Jesus. So as we stand together to make it easy for anybody who may want to walk, if you want to choose Jesus, we invite you to come. Maybe you stray, you ran away for whatever reason. But today you were reminded, I turned away from God, but he never turned away from me. We invite you to come because God is standing with open arms to receive you. So why don't you come? Why don't you come? Yeah. already decided to follow Jesus, can you just lift your hand and say, Father, I'm so glad that I am your child. I'm so glad I made a decision to follow you. 
I know I don't follow perfectly, but I'm so glad that I'm following Jesus. So will you strengthen me? Help me? Encourage me? And then use me so that I can rep you wherever I go. So Father, we thank you and bless you and praise you for your word. We thank you for this opportunity to worship together. We pray your blessings upon us as we leave. Remind those of us who have trusted in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior that we are children of God. We hear and receive your affirmation. We hear and receive the confirmation. So bless us now because we have clarity on our identity to be able to go forth from this place empowered with courage to live out our purpose for your glory and your honor. Hear our prayer and keep us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you today as you go. There's a miracle in this room With my name on There's a healing in this room And it's here for me Oh, there's a breakthrough
touch from you. No one else can do the things you do. Take the wrong in my life and make it right. A touch, from you. a touch from you, from a master and king, all I need is a touch from you. God is here. 